<laughs> so living in New York, I think anybody who's lived there uh, knows that whether or not you're going to make rent is, tends to be high on the list of things people are talking about. That's it. I'm going to sue them. You know that? They locked my stuff away. They you're didn't give me any them, notice. Jasper? You haven't They're supposed paid to give me rent. at least three day notice. And this movie, ultimately, it's a love story. And where we, we first meet Jasper, he's with this girl, Marika, and it's just not the right girl. So, does this mean that you're mm. moving in? No, I got it. I got another spot. My writing spot. Your writing spot? He, you know, he follows his heart and ends up putting himself through this rite of passage that, uh, you know, prepares him to meet the right girl. I think it is very special that you go and write in the cemetery. I like your work. It's a love story, but it's a story about town and country, a guy who can't stand the city anymore, wants to go back to nature, but also doesn't want to leave the, go too far away from the city. And the, and the cemetery is kind of the perfect solution, but it also symbolizes something about the death of his current self, um, so then he can move on and, and do what he's really called to do. This week, we have lost a great man and poet. Jasper James, age 32, died Sunday, leaving a legacy cut short and heavy hearts in the chests of his many readers. Does he live ultimately or does he die ultimately? Uh, you gotta watch the full movie to know. And if you still don't know, there's a little hint that's uh, out there in the credits. We can make a road trip and then you can show me America. I always wanted to see the Great Canyon. Grand. I'm Ryan Fensenhood, writer and director of the obituary of Jasper James. And I hope you like the movie.